hey guys welcome back to simtech channel so in this tutorial i'm going to show you how to set up multiple external interrupt with your stm32 nuclear board now this is a follow-up tutorial from the previous one where we basically saw how you can set up a single uh, interrupt using your stm32 as you can see here i've got a simple button interrupt now when you look into the main program there is nothing running here okay the program is basically got an infinite loop with nothing being executed now you could be having some task running here okay but then as soon as i hit the button then i'm toggling this led that is connected on pin 5 of gpioa and the button here is on gpio 13 so basically we've got an interrupt attached with the user button please watch the tutorial so you can familiarize yourself now if you stick around I'm going to now show you how you're going to add more interrupt in the system. As you can see here, I've already included some extra hardware in the system. Now I've got some extra LEDs here because the nuclear board only provides us one single LED. So what we have to do is to add more external LEDs, but we're only going to use two of them. Right. Then I've got some external buttons since we only have one user button. Now we need more. Now, this is an interesting one because these are touch buttons, as you can see. Now, this is a subject for another tutorial. This touch button is actually powered, well, it is run by a single channel proximity sensor and touch sensor. Now, this IC here is manufactured by Azotec Semiconductor. Now, we're going to talk about that some other time. I will drop the Azotech link on the description box if you want to check out the website. Now, if you find this tutorial useful and you find it beneficial, please don't forget to subscribe to SimTech channel and give this tutorial a thumbs up. That will go a very long way. Right now, without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and basically create a new project. So there is a few ways you can do that. It's either you create a new project or you make a copy of this project. Now, because of the fact that we're going to be using the MX Cube interface to configure our microcontroller here. So if you do a configuration and you generate a new script, it's going to override whatever you have running onto this project here. So if you want to preserve your project, you have to either make a copy or create a new project. Now, to make things easier here, I'm going to make a copy of this project here. So I will basically just copy it. Okay, and I'm going to paste it right here. Now, this is going to basically create a duplicate and I'm going to rename this to multiple external interrupt. Right, then I have to remove that too and I'm just going to say copy. Now, once your project is done and making a copy, expand it and double click on the new multiple external interrupt. Now, Yours might still be the same way with the STM32 external here. You have to rename it as well. And once you're done renaming it, double click it. You're going to get a new MX Cube interface like this one. Right now, if you don't have uh, an existing project that you can make a copy, please watch my previous tutorial where I show how you can easily create a new project. Now, once you are here, what we're going to do here, the first thing we're going to reset the pin out. Let's go ahead and clear all the pins into default mode, basically preset mode. Now, we need to select the pins that we're basically going to use. Now, like I said here, I'm going to use two buttons here. These two buttons, which I've already connected to PC2 and PC3. And I'm going to use these two LEDs, which I've also already connected to PA6 and PA7. Then, I'm still going to use the pin on the motherboard so basically the led pa5 is going to be my main program and the external stuff here are going to be coming from the interrupt now let's go ahead and choose pa5 and set it to output mode for the led and pa6 output mode and pa7 output mode now once you've done that let's go ahead and move to pc2 and PC3. Now, this is now going to be set up as an external interrupt and PC3 as an external interrupt. Right. Now, the next thing here is PC13. Now, PC13, that will be the user button here. 
PC2 and PC3 will be the two external touch buttons here. Now let's go ahead and move to the next step. Now the next step here is to configure the GPIO. Now when you open the GPIO setting here, you're going to see all the configuration that you have done here. Now your LEDs are all configured to output push-pull and there is no pull up or pull down. So basically the pin is just floating and your PC2, you can see the setup as interact. Now we're going to change PC13 to a falling edge instead of a rising edge. Let's go ahead and change that. And once you change that, you can see the tick box code tick here. Then we move on to the last step. The last step is to enable the interrupt service routine. Let's go ahead and enable them here. Right. Now, everything is set up. This is basically all we need here. We don't have to do any other stuff. We can go ahead and generate the code for our project. You click on the generate button and it should start generating your code. Yes. Now, once your code is done generating, you can go ahead and look into the generated script. As you can see, you've got your function definition here, prototype and your main loop. And there is exactly nothing in here except the system clock configuration and some initialization that we've got here. Now, if you come down here, you're going to see where they basically set up the interrupt priorities and enable them and if you look into your gpio in it you're going to see that you've got the clock enabled for port c and port a where you've got your buttons and your leds attached right now the next thing to do here is to go into the drivers we need to look for the callback function okay the callback function that is going to be handling the external interrupt now that function we're going to find it in the driver for the gpio now if you go into the interrupt.c files this is where they basically handling the function to handle the interrupt for wherever we've defined those external interrupt and one of which is you can see on pin 2 it is being handled there pin 3 of gpio port c and also on pin 13 all the pins that we've configured external interrupt but now we need a callback function now the callback function we're going to find it in the external driver here the hal driver let's go ahead and open the gpio uh dot c file now once this file open here you're going to see here on the outline all the functions available in the file okay we are looking for the callback function let's look at the callback function here there we go right the last one callback function now you can see there is a underscore double underscore wiki here. now i've explained this on the previous tutorial please you can go watch my tutorial where i explained that term now we're going to copy it and go back into our main file here okay and let's find a place to paste that code user code begins let's put it right there and i'm going to paste it now we have to remove the wick there okay so that we don't have function clashing and we're going to basically just remove every other thing in this function here now this function is a function called but that basically going to handle the interrupt that we set for ourselves there so we need to put wherever we want that must happen when an interrupt trigger right now before we handle the callback let's go back into the main function here where we're going to put the main program the main program that will be running before an interrupt occur now to do that i'm going to do some copy paste here i'm basically going to copy some code that need to run in the main function so i'm going to go ahead and paste this piece of code here now this code is basically going to toggle the led that is attached okay onto pa5 now as you can see i've got a delay function here that i wrote on my previous tutorial i'm going to paste that delay function also here i've got my delay function paste now the delay function also need a function prototype so let's go ahead and paste the function prototype now we can paste it in here like all of this or we can go ahead and paste it in the man dot h uh that exit in that file there it doesn't matter but i'm going to paste it in here to make things easier for us 
right now if we run this code we basically just going to get the led blinking with no external interrupt so let's go back into the callback function and here we're going to configure our interrupt and place whatever we want to be running when I interrupt okay so i'm going to use a simple if statement here okay so that basically what you can do all right because when an interrupt happen you're going to come into this function that's what's going to happen you're going to come in here and what you're going to do you do whatever you want to do so i'm going to run an if statement here so in my if statement i'm going to say if gpio underscore pin is equal equal to what gpio underscore pin now this is the pin number pin 13 so basically if the interrupt occur on pin 13 this is what i'm going to do what am i going to do i want to flash one of these pin basically to just flash it when an interrupt occur so i'm going to call the function h a l underscore g p i o now when i hit control and escape i got an option that pop up and i choose the g p i o underscore right pin now i need to pass the port number here that's going to be port a where the led is attached now the next option is to basically just pass the pin i'm going to copy this and then just pass it there and we want to basically toggle one of the led here and that is on ps6 and we want the state the state must change what state we're going to do we're going to say gpio underscore pin underscore set okay we want to set the pin so that basically we want to turn it on and then i'm going to call a delay i've already got my delay function here i'll call the delay and i'm going to paste the delay in here then i'm going to copy this function again and paste it then here i'm going to change it to reset so this is going to give me a special effect here of basically flash on and off very quickly then i have to pass the delay function again right now before we move forward let's first do some checkpoint here so i'm going to go ahead and build this project okay it is important to make sure that everything is going well okay there we go there is a problem okay the program build without errors but we got two warnings let's look at the warnings here the function uh implicit declaration of the function might delay whoa, 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 whoa. that's usually happen if the prototype is not there we do have it ah there we go so the function prototype is basically placed before the function declaration itself so we have to remove it and put it way up here okay that's the reason why it would have been better actually it is recommended to just put it in the header file here okay so i'm going to go ahead and just put it in the header file that's better great now we're going to go back into our main file and this time let's run it again and we should have the error removed because we have fixed it patience no warnings no error which means our code so far everything is going well we've got our blinking running on the main loop and we've got one interrupt already handled now let's go ahead and do the second and the third interrupt now our next interrupt handler here is going to be these two buttons here so what we're going to do is we're going to toggle this led on and off using the two buttons so one button is going to put the led on the other button is going to put the led off okay so to do that we basically just going to do an elf if statement because as soon as we get into the callback function we're going to run a bunch of else if statement else right and another else okay now i'm going to go ahead and copy this code and paste it in there and copy this one as well and paste it there then i'm going to change this to the button two and to three basically pin two and pin three of gpio c 
Then inside what I'm going to execute, I'm going to set with the one button and I'm going to reset with the other button. Okay. Now I have to change the LED now, right? Because I'm using already LED six here. So I'm going to use the LED on pin seven. So I'm going to change the to seven and also the to seven. Now, this is basically our code. Now, once again, guys, I'm just going to remind you that if you find this tutorial useful, please, please drop a like and drop a comment in the comment section below to ask any question you may have in your mind. Now, I'm going to basically just compile this code now or build this code because we basically done and we're going to load it and hope for the best, right? So we want it to basically run without any problem. Okay, first thing, no errors, no warning. That's a good sign, okay? Now I need to load it in now. There we go, waiting for the debugger. It is loading, it is loading, okay. Basically we done, okay, the code is done loading, verify successfully as you can see, we've got the LED that is blinking now. Now this LED that's blinking here, that's basically our main program, okay? So that's a main program, now this could be anything, You, it's just anything that you can imagine. Now we want to interrupt this code, the first interrupt, there we go, you can see the LED is flashing when we interrupt, okay? Now the next interrupt, our touch button, oops, nothing is happening. Okay, maybe this button is a set button because I'm not sure which one is going where. Now let's go to this one. There we go. The LED comes on and we put it off. The LED goes off. As you can see, we are able to set and reset. Set and reset. Now this all is happening as an external interrupt. And we can still interrupt again with that one. And while you're doing the set and reset, now observe that while all that is happening, you still have your blinking uninterrupted. The blinking is still happening while you are busy interrupting the call to do some other activity. Your main program is still running. So that is it, guys. I hope you found this tutorial useful. And please make sure you subscribe to Simtech channel. Stay tuned for more tutorial of this nature coming up your way. Until next time, cheers.